Apple Robin. Resolving conflict. Resolving conflict. Michael Robin. chest, like an alien in a Sigourney Weaver movie trying to break out. The sound of my blood rushing in my ears drowned out all the other noises around me. I could barely hear the six and a half foot tall, 400 pound man standing in front of me yelling. This man had followed me inside the crest from the parking lot and he was mad. Mr. Toastmaster, fellow Toastmasters and guests, we all have to deal with conflict. And this crest experience will demonstrate three techniques that I found invaluable in resolving conflict. The first is to breathe. Stress, no, conflict causes stress, which can trigger a fight or flight response in our bodies. That pounding of our heart, the sound of the blood rushing in our ears, is our body's attempt to get oxygen wherever it's needed. Taking a deep breath will help ensure that our muscles have the oxygen they need to fight or to flee. But more importantly, it'll help to make sure that our brain has the oxygen it needs to make the right decision. Everyone take a moment right now, take a deep breath in. Hold it for a second, slowly let it out. This intentional breathing not only gives our brain the oxygen it needs to react rationally instead of emotionally or out of fear, but gives us a chance to collect our thoughts or our senses if we're really mad. The second technique for conflict resolution is to understand the needs of the other person. What did this guy standing in front of me yelling need in that moment? He was mad about something that happened in the parking lot. So we had a little situation where I was blocking the aisle he wanted to turn down, and he was blocking the parking space I wanted to pull into, and neither one of us wanted to give. That's why he was mad. That's why he followed me into the grocery store to yell at me, but that's not what he needed in that moment. The things that he was yelling had nothing to do with what he really needed. What he needed, according to the me from 20 years ago, was to be punched in the throat. <laughs> Fortunately, I'm a little wiser than I was 20 years ago. I didn't punch him in the throat, and my daughters didn't see me get arrested that day. What he needed was somebody to listen. What did it cost me to listen to him say what he needed to say? My oldest daughter told me that she was standing by in case he took a swing at me because she was going to jump in. She has not yet acclimated to this more zen approach to conflict resolution. The third technique for conflict resolution is to let it go. This step can be particularly difficult if our ego's been bruised or if we feel we've been wronged in some way. And as this man walked away, what would have been best for me to do would be to let it go. I didn't do that. <laughs> My mouth from 20 years ago reared its ugly head. And as he turned and stormed away, I said, bye. Fortunately, the blood rushing in his ears drowned that out, or he's better practiced. That stress that we hold on to when we have conflict is like a flame on a candle. If we don't put it out and let it go, it'll burn us down. And I felt it as I went through the store the rest of that trip with my children. My chest felt tight. My stomach felt like there was a brick doing the merengue or something in there. 
the hairs on the back of my neck stood on end. I didn't need the stress to follow me throughout my day. What I needed was to let it go. Like I said, it's not easy to let things go. But it helps if we remember to breathe. Breathe, understand the needs of the other person, and let it go. These three techniques are critical in resolving conflict. I hope you remember them the next time conflict arises or the next time somebody's yelling at you in the grocery store. Mr. Toastmaster.